Hello, my name is Shelley Murphy, and I'm the family historian for the Goins family in Jefferson County, West Virginia. Started this journey about 1998, researching along with my mom. Joseph and Nancy Goins came out of Loudoun County into Jefferson County right after the 1810 census. One of the most interesting points about this family is one of their sons is Lawson Goins. He was born in 1806 in Loudoun County, but he came over here with his family and became a boatman. And he worked at the Shenandoah Ferry Resort area. And one of the interesting things is he had 11 children, all born and raised in Jefferson County. What we found was a record on from 1838 regarding a lawsuit where he was found guilty for stealing $21 worth of bonds from the Shenandoah Ferry Springs. We don't understand really what happened there because we had one of his daughters is born in 1840, so we're not sure if he actually did time. The sentence was five years in jail or five years in the penitentiary. We haven't been able to locate any other records. But his daughter Mary Goins is my great, 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 grand, great, great grandmother. Anyway, she married George Marsh. Another interesting thing is this boatman, Lawson Goins, he lived in the Bushy Ridge area at one time and also in the Cable Town area. We've been told about stories that were documenting that the folks that were living up on Bush, Bushy Ridge were actually put off. The free coloreds that were living there on that land were had to move for some reason or another. So we located Lawson also down in Cable Town, still being a boatman for 30 years for the Shenandoah Springs um, Ferry. And so he took people across on a daily basis as that resort was open. A lot of dignitaries came to the Shenandoah Ferry. We also found the 1856 flyer, original flyer that documented one of the events at the Springs you know, that people were coming out for the mineral waters and things like that. And another thing that was interesting is that Lawson never owned property. He owned items, animals and things, but as far as we can document, he only leased land. And also when he died, we found that he died in Clark County. We don't know why he was in Clark County. He died on 12 July, 1874. And I found that document based on a reprint from the Jefferson Spirit magazine in 1914 while I was at um, Shepherdtown uh, University. And the microfilm showed the reprint and said Lawson Goins, free colored, worked 30 years for the Shenandoah Ferry Springs, died, age 67. That gave us a lot of leads to go on. Now we had the flyer to document where my great-great-grandfather lived, and then we could find out other things within the community, where are the records and things like that. Just for the record, it's called Shannondale Springs. I'd like to talk a little bit about Mary Catherine Goins, my great-great-grandmother. She was born in Charlestown, West Virginia in 1840. She married George W. Marsh, who was a slave and became free. They lived in Jefferson County during the Civil War time. The oral history came through the family that one day George was out in the field and Mary was holding their new baby in 1864. She had a couple dollars wrapped in the blanket while she was holding the baby. Union troops came onto the property, asked for supplies and things. Mary was very scared. George was out in the field. She didn't know what to do. She was worried they were going to take the money or bring harm to the baby. The soldiers were very nice to her, got the supplies, and left on. Mary and George left Jefferson County right after the Civil War. They headed up to Ohio, stopped in Morrow County, Ohio for a couple years, and then went on to homestead and be the first colored family to homestead in Manistee County, Michigan. And there they had 12 children. 
Mary brought seeds with her from West Virginia, fruit trees, apples, pears, and things like that. When they homesteaded, they planted a thousand strawberry plants to get going on that property. And today, 30 acres of the original 160 are still in the family. Coming back to Jefferson County, Mary has several siblings. Three of Lawson Goins' children married Roper children. Ropers uh, linked to Nicholas Roper who came over from Suffolk, England. And he had one child, a male child, by one of his slaves. And that male child's name was James Roper. James became free. His father, Nicholas Roper, had freed him. But before he was free, because his mother was a slave, he had leased all of his land and holdings to James Roper for a 90, with a 99-year lease. Because at that time, slaves could not own property. Then, of course, he was freed also. There are pa the actual documents of his manumission and everything are on record. The Roper family here in Jefferson County do have those items. And there is a website that people can visit called NicholasRoper.com. These three children of the Roper, the three Goins children that married Ropers also, of course, have descendants. We're in contact with most of them at this time, even trying to learn more about the family. We had two children that, of Lawson Goins that married Johnsons. We linked those Johnsons to the Johnsontown family. They're also still here. Coming through the census time, we can document Lawson and his family definitely in the 1850 census and the 1860 census as free colored families in Jefferson County. One of the interesting facts about that is 1870, Lawson and his wife Sarah Hart Goins disappears. We don't know where they're at. We don't hear anything about Lawson again until July 12, 1874, when he died, and we found that obit at Shepherd University. So it's been an interesting journey to document where in this person went and the family went in 1870. I want to highlight a little more about Mary Catherine Goins, one of Lawson's daughters and her daughter, Ardella. Mary married George Marsh, who was a slave in the area of Jefferson County. They left and went to Michigan, as I mentioned before. They homesteaded in Manistee County, Michigan. When they got there, they planted their thousand strawberry plants and they documented that they were, you know, gonna, they worked that land and had lived in that property for five years, received the ownership certificate. Now, Ardella, married John Manitou, who was the son of Joe Manitou. It's kind of the Michigan story. What's interesting about the Manitous is John's father's name was Chief Joe Manitou. He lived till he was 110 years old. We have a fabulous picture of him. I thought that was an interesting story. They had children all raised in Michigan. I want to talk about a couple other of Lawson Goins' his children. Charles Henry Goins, who married Louisa Victoria Roper, who actually was the daughter of Nicholas O. Roper. And Nicholas was the son of James Roper, who was the mulatto child of the infamous Nicholas Roper from Suffolk, England. What happened with Charles was the story was documented that when he was 10 years old, he used to go out and play the fiddle for the Union troops. His mother, who is um, Mary, I'm sorry, Sarah Goins, used to fuss a lot about him, fuss with the Union troops about them, giving her 10-year-old son liquor to get him to play that fiddle. And his descendant, grandson, George Howe, has that fiddle to this day and told the story and remembered, you know, when he knew his grandpa, or grandpap Goins, he called him, um, played that fiddle and he died um, when I think George was a couple years old about three years old but he remembers that fiddle playing. George and his wife have researched the Goins families as well. Charles 
and his wife Louisa left Jefferson County about 1910 and went on into Maryland and raised their family and they also have died there. And George had one daughter. George talked about um, the stories that he heard growing up. Number one, the fiddle. Number two, about another going sibling, which would be Charles's brother, Joseph. He said Joseph had a hard life here in Jefferson County. Kind of wasn't successful in anything. He did some farming and things. He married Lucy Sims. Sims came out of Berryville, Virginia area. And they had um, seven or eight children. We found some of the Sims family connected to the Lewis family, the Fisher Lewis family that was also located in Jefferson County, who also linked to Battle Muse. Fisher Lewis happened to be the grandson of ba Battle Muse. Another family is um, Nancy Goins, one of Lawson's daughter. She married Emmanuel Johnson. We don't know what happened to them. They're in the 1860 census. We found them in the 1880 census, and Lawson's wife, Sarah Hart, was in the household with them. Of course, Lawson's already gone in 1874, but we don't know what happened to him after that. We have another sibling I like to mention, and that's uh, Francis. Francis married a Roper also, James Douglas Roper. And they have descendants still in the area as well. Another sibling I'd like to speak about is Stephen, one of Lawson's sons. Stephen actually served in the Civil War to our knowledge. We've got documentation that he received a pension. There's more to follow up on that. Stephen actually died and is buried in Ripon. So we're on the search to find that grave per the documents. There's a couple other sons, John Francis, we believe that he filed a Southern Claims report for um, giving supplies to some of the Union troops. And then there's Richard Payton, is one of the sons. He was born in 1852. And we have no idea if he stayed in the area or if he moved on. We have found no other records on him. So there is a lot more research to be done on the free family of the Goenses. 